Hey, hi everybody. I am going to make some hand pies, some savory hand pies, and I thought I'd show you how I do it this time. So I've got some Rhodes Dinner Rolls, R-H-O-D-E-S is the brand Rhodes Dinner Rolls, and they have risen on a pan. I'm going to take them out one at a time, roll them out here and, you know, to a circle, and then I'm going to put some of this, it's got peppers and cheese and ground beef and onion and it's the pioneer woman savory hand pie recipe and I will try to remember to link it in the back at the bottom in the more look for the thing that says more and click on it then I'm going to fold oh then I'm going to add some more pepper jack to it because I didn't think it had enough pepper jack to begin with because I shredded it and I should have used regular okay so and then I'm going to you know, pinch it shut, put a little egg wash on it, put it in a pan that I have here ugh, lined with silpat, and bake it off until it's nice. It's really already cooked. I'm just waiting for the bread to be done is what I'm doing. So I'll show you one when I get it done, or halfway. Rolled one out. Unfortunately, I let these rise too long, so they're in worse shape than they should be. But I rolled one out. I put a spoonful, like this kind of a spoon, into the middle here and a half a slice of pepper jack. Now I'm going to try to close it. I had to go get my pastry brush because I forgot that I need to put some egg wash around there to seal it. All right, so I wrapped, you know, a, a roll, a, a dough roll around a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of meat with the peppers and the onions and all of that. And then I folded it over. I put some egg wash around the edges. I folded it over. I Oh, I put some cheese in it. <laughs> and then I folded it over. And then I crimped it with a fork and some flour. And then I um, put a little egg wash on the top and just a bitty bit of salt on the top. And now I'm going to bake it just like I would if it were a regular roll per the package directions. Again, you're going to want to look up the actual recipe from Pioneer Woman for savory hand pies because this is a mere skeleton of what it once was. I have made it for so long, I don't even look. I just do it. And that drives some of the children in this house nuts. And maybe that's, you know, bad on me. But I think that most women are like that, that, you know, if you've made things a few times, you feel like you got it. Anyway, I'm going to stick it in the oven because it's 11 o'clock. And here they are. So some of them will, look, there'll be a little leakage, but you can just take the, the roll and kind of go around the leakage and it sticks to the bread so it's not wasted. <laughs> I'm trying to find one that did that. Well, we had an ugly one and I ate it, so maybe that was it. Anyway, they're cooling now and um, I think we've got 14 here. I ate one, I'm not sure. You can count them. If you haven't heard my story on this, this is a can of Wondra. I use it when I'm doing things like like rolling on parchment or, or whatever, and I need you know flour down. It's just real fine flour. I dropped the can and I busted the whole the metal bottom off of it, but there was still a bunch in it. So I put it in here rather than waste it. And I've decided I'm done doing it like this. I um, There's a little left in it, and I'll use it. But <laughs> I ordered some more. I put it on my grocery, you know, app thing at, for next time when I order groceries. And I also had to order more parchment because my parchment situation is getting sad. And cookie season is upon us. There could be some out in the garage. I keep extras of some things but I don't want to chance it. And I always use parchment. I use it on a lot of things. And so that's my story on that. I've got a pumpkin pie in the oven. It's not homemade. It is store-bought. And it's going to have to cook for an hour and 10 minutes. And then I'm going to put the macaroni and cheese in there. And, you know, at least it will have been cooked. I don't know what time everybody's going to roll in, but one kid is definitely going to be here at 515. I don't know about everybody else. Um, yeah, and I still have to put together stuff for the board, slice some oranges and, you know, stuff like that.
so to make it pretty but for now I'm gonna go hang out and watch some videos that you all put on I just thought of something that I did not say oh and here's one that has some leakage right there anyway um I didn't use raw hamburger. You probably knew that just from looking at it. I had cooked a pound of ground beef and added the onion and the peppers and everything while it was cooking. It also takes a little tomato paste, salt, pepper. Anyway, um, if you put raw hamburger in these, it's, it won't cook. You only get like 17 minutes tops, I think. Maybe it was even less. <laughs> it's been so long since I made them. Here's another update on the puzzle. So we've got a little bit, she's got, she's got a cup of coffee and you can see her red fingernail there. She's reading a book. And so we've done the edges and a good bit of this part with her in the book. So one of the kids that likes to do puzzles with me likes to get all the pieces and put them in the middle. And I like to look at the box and go, I could pick this out of the box, like the dark blanket she's got there on her lap or the fireplace flames. And then I take those little pieces that I put together and I put them together, right? Is that weird or is that how anybody else does it? I think that different people use their brain in different ways Obviously, I think that's what everybody thinks, you know, to put puzzles together. And this person that lives in my house and does puzzles, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say their names. Um, they, uh, what am I going to say? They, they just see everything as a whole. It's super intelligent person, too. Like, um, works in a job where he is using his brain all day, you know, so I think he's just wired differently and all, always was. Learned to read as soon as he could talk just about. Oh, mercy, these dogs. I hope somebody's not at my door again. A little while ago, somebody came screaming up the driveway to say, is this your dog? I found a dog on the road. No, not my dog. Um, the dog is fine. It was in her back seat. But I didn't know anything about it, and so one of the kids went out there with a, what do you call those, uh, a chip reader. And there wasn't a chip as far as they could tell. And um, so she said she was probably going on down to the pound, the, the shelter. We don't call it the pound anymore. Going to the shelter with it. So if anybody comes to look, and that's where it'll be. Okay. I guess I can just go ahead and close this out now. Um, I hate to sound grumpy, you know, about... It. She, I, when, when she came screaming up the driveway, I thought it was an Amazon delivery, and I said, Good Lord, these Amazon delivery people need to take a chill pill. <laughs> I think she was just excited that she maybe found its home. <laughs> There is a guy, you've probably all seen him. He's, his line is, white women ain't scared of nothing. And he's got video after video after video of white women picking up baby raccoon, baby possum, baby, you know, and that full grown adult Rottweilers. <laughs> And talking to him in a baby voice, you know, oh, you poor thing, are you lost? I take you home. <laughs> and that's what this reminded me of. I used to be like that too, but now I, the last dog, I, and I have done it, the last dog I picked up was in my parking lot of my office. And I knew it didn't live there because there are no houses around my office. And so I opened up my car door and it was a, um, what do you call those? The whiskey around the neck in a barrel. St. Bernard. It was a St. Bernard. It was a sunny summer day, and it was a St. Bernard out in the sun. And so the St. Bernard jumps in my van. I close the door. I get in the other side, and that dog did a full body shake. And when he did, fur flew everywhere. Fur and dander. Dust-looking stuff. And it, it glistened in the sun as it landed everywhere in my car. 
<laughs> I got its collar and it had a, you know, a phone number. I called the phone number. I said, I've got your dog. <laughs> and she came and she, you know, pulled into my parking lot, opened the car door, motioned for the dog to get out and close my clo car door. <laughs> she was not happy that she had to come pick that dog up. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, I've got to stop babbling. I will talk to you guys later. If you haven't ever thought to give me a thumbs up or a comment or subscribe, I love new subscribers. I'd love it if you did that. Take care, everybody. I will not be back until tomorrow. I mean it. <laughs>